Hello there, Taurus. I hope you guys all have a wonderful, wonderful birthday celebration. And um, I do wish you all the best for this year and, you know, all the blessings and all the uh, wonderful things that are going to be coming your way. Um, first of all, let me just talk about the energies that I'm picking up here. And then we'll go a little bit into, you know, the other cards that I drew out. Um, first off, for the month of May, what I'm seeing here is, um, I pre-shuffle the cards ahead of time. This is an idea of like this machine, okay? It's the Wheel of Fortune in the center of the spread. It's by all means a very, very good card. But I feel like in this context and in the context that we're dealing with for the month of May, this is kind of like that machine. And uh, what it is is that, you know, it, it takes in inputs and then it spits out outputs. And I feel like for many of you, this is your contribution. Okay, you have a lot of skills to offer. You have a lot of like specialized knowledge and expertise and know-how. And many of you are great with problem solving, troubleshooting, um, supervisors or managers or people that are in charge of big accounts or large quantities of data or uh, doing quality control. And this is your input. And you're putting in a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of work and you put it into this machine and of course you know it's going to bring about a lot of prosperity right so you're coming into it believing in the system believing that if you work really really hard you're going to get where you need to be because the machine will reward you right and the the greater the input the greater the output so so you kind of come into the world or come into this work environment really believing in it and then you kind of feed into it. But then along the way, you kind of encounter the opposite scenarios where people that don't have very much, you know, they're, they're, they don't come with all the skills and all the uh, expertise and all the educational background and all the life experiences or even the work experiences. They come in very, very subpar and just uh, underwhelming. And they're also feeding into the machine and they're also getting a lot of prosperity back at them. So is that really fair? I don't think that it is. And especially, you know, in your predicament, I really don't feel that it is. And you don't feel that it's fair. But yet you're encountering situations in your work environment and in your professional life where people that have, you know, an underwhelming amount of skills they're being treated the same way that you are treated, where you spent many, many years cultivating and honing in on and perfecting your craft. And you're not, or you, you are getting the same level of recognition and it just feels very unfair, unjust. I also feel many of you Torian people on either side of the coin, okay? So many of you, right now are in a really really good career path and I feel for many of you you could be like um, 35 to like 45 okay that age group quite successful having a lot of people that you can uh, that you command everyone looks up to you to solve their problems um, some of you have like a large following so that means you have a lot of people that are working under you and they're doing the dirty work for you. So you're commanding them and they're doing the dirty work for you. It doesn't, you know, it's not all about like classism or anything like that, but it's just like stating that people trust you to take the lead and people are willing to follow you because they trust your judgment. So it's a really good position to be. Some of you are in leadership positions as well. Leaders amongst um, children, among the next generation, amongst people in um, politics as well. So it basically means that, you know, you're in the public eye, you're under a lot of scrutiny and you pass the test mainly because you don't have a single blemish in your background. And then as a result of that, I feel like you're also feeding into this, uh, building up your professional life, building up your networks, building up your connection. And I feel like you're, you're already at that apex. And there is this sense, for those of you who are dealing with, there's this sense of like, I can just coast. I can just, you know, put in very, very little amount of work. 
but you know even then you are perfectionistic so you're not going to be underselling yourself but I feel it's almost like I can coast I know everything there is to know I can come to work without ever being stumped by questions and so you feel almost as like it gets to that point where it's like what else is out there should I explore new horizons I want to but I might be stuck with a specific skill set that are not transferable to other industries so where can I go where can I um, apply my skills where can I go so that I don't have to start at the bottom of the totem pole but you know rely on the skills that I, I already have under my belt and kind of expand upon it many of you are seriously thinking about a change in your geographical location where do I want to settle down uh, where do I want to buy property? Where do I want to have children? Where do I want to raise children? Do I want to be here or overseas? So there are a lot of issues that are coming through more on the long-term ideological front. Do I want to settle here or do I want to move somewhere else? And I feel a lot of foreign energy such as, you know, with the Wheel of Fortune, this deals uh, more on the global scale. Do I, am I happy staying in this country or should I make a move elsewhere? And I also feel as well, you know, all my skills, or my, all of my work experience is in one country. Is it transferable or translatable into another work environment or into working in another um, country? So, for example, some of you might have like, you know, a lot of schooling and a lot of ba um, educational background in one country. So, for example, you have a um, even, I want to say like, um, let's say an MBA in one country or you have like a, a doctorate degree in one country and if you were to move those degrees are not transferable and so you find yourself kind of stuck right you don't want to start over but at the same time it's really difficult for you to make that move that transition um, when the, the the degrees themselves are not recognized in the new country and then many of you want to change I'm hearing like change jurisdiction like you you might have a license in one state and you want to practice in another state but you have to redo that process you have to get the license in the new state so all of these things are coming up for uh, re-examination and I see a lot of people in institutional roles like working in some type of a either a federal agency or a academic institutions medical institutions um, things that are accredited things that require licensing things that require like um, it's like it, it's not a, a walk in the park to get yourself in the door to get your foot in the door so if you were to leave it and start over it can feel very daunting and it can also feel like you have to start from scratch but there are new opportunities that are coming in on the horizon right now and I feel it's converging it's like it's coming in for you and some of you you might have an offer on the table to switch agency to switch into a new position to switch into something a little bit different and I feel like you're definitely emotionally drawn to that decision you know to to that offer but it might not pay as much as you're hoping it might not pay um, what you feel would be enough to support your standard of living so it's a big trade-off here but I feel like you're looking for something new the status quo is okay it looks great you know uh, you have a lot of respect people really love and admire you in the work environment they admire your work ethics but I, I do sense that you've been here a little bit too long and you're just like I'm, I'm, I'm growing roots I'm um, I'm gathering moss and so shifting changing gears moving would be the ideal circumstance and there's a sense of wanderlust again like wanting something a little bit more exotic wanting something a little bit different okay so that's coming into the picture the rest of this spread what it talks about overall is um, it deals heavily with I keep seeing this for you guys as well it's an environment where we do we, we really have to 
work together with other people. This is a card about collaboration, and this is uh, deals heavily with exchanging in ideas, sharing our, our best practices, listening to other people, and finding mentors or finding teachers in very unlikely places, okay? So it's sort of like learning by doing, and also the people that you manage, they actually might be the ones that have a lot to teach you. So whereas you're hoping to learn from your supervisors, your manager, your higher ups, but in fact, because of this collaborative card, it deals heavily with learning from unlikely sources. It's like messengers come in all shapes and forms. So you might be, you might have an underling that's, you know, like an intern that's just starting out, you're managing his or her work and they're teaching you a lot of things. They're the ones that are bringing new ideas into the picture. And so I, I feel here, it's kind of like um, allowing yourself that humility to learn from people that might not have, that might not have as much experience as you do, but because they're looking at the same problem with an, a fresh pair of eyes, they're able to arrive at creative solutions that you might not have thought about. So I feel a lot of collaboration coming in, sharing knowledge, sharing skills, sharing the best way to do something. And I feel as if this process alone, it's sort of like, um, it's, a, it's a really good process overall. I'm also sensing as if there are some people in your work environment that are taking it the wrong way. You know, they're very about, they're, they're very much about hierarchy and they're very much about, I've been here longer. You need to listen to me. Uh, this is a new person. They don't really have the skills and the expertise. They should not be able to tell us what to do, or they should not be able to, you know, um, I want to say, they should not have a say in the direction of the company because they, they haven't been around. So there are, are um, conflicting messages here regarding people that might have been um, in the field for a really long time, but they have no idea what they're doing or they're so entrenched in it, it's hard for them to sh uh, shift gears and it's hard for them to think creatively. Okay, we all know those types. And then there are people that are brand new that are very innovative, but no one's really giving them the time of day. So it is up to you to really try to shape young minds. Some of you might be teachers, shaping young minds. Um, it might be up to you to, you know, provide the creative framework so that you can uh, allow these new people to explore and allow these new people like some type of hands-on approaches so that they can learn by doing and that they can, you know, uh, improve their problem-solving skills. So don't listen to the people that are like, I've been around, I know exactly what I'm doing but they're not really, you know, pulling their weight or they're so entrenched in one way of doing things that they're not able to switch gears, think creatively, solve problems through a new fresh uh, pair of eyes or, you know, adopt new technology even. So success is only on the surface. You have to really delve deep to really, you know, understand what people are dealing with and how they perceive their work, okay, because success is only skin deep. So aside from that, the other messages that I'm getting in the picture here, it feels to me as if many of you are thinking about, once again, change in location. And you might, you know, want to stay in the same job, but really, really thinking about, like, um, saving up, planning, plotting to kind of leave the nest. Some of you might be living with parents, and um, the housing environment looks a little bit crowded. The work that's cut out, it's sort of like, I have a space, you know, uh, I don't have to pay rent or I'm paying very minimal rent and I'm not doing all the chores. The, the chores are divided between all the people in the household, possibly with um, family. And so it just feels as if it's very comfortable. You know, it's like, it's not a lot of work because it's uh, spread out across many people. But you're at a point where you do want to grow and you do want to be able to be independent. So many of you are at this place, it's a catch 22. On the one hand, it's so comfortable and you know, rent is cheap. But on the other hand, 
it's like I really want to have my own space so I see many of you plotting and planning in that regards and I'm also seeing many of you the house situation there might have been you might have been thinking about like repairs and things like that like um this is a card about marriage and it's also like the the physical dwelling okay when it's in the reverse I usually think of like putting a lot of money putting a lot of money into a relationship putting a lot of money into housing repairs and um, you might have come out since the beginning of the year since January fixing something uh, cleaning up something cleaning up the gutters cleaning up the drain uh, doing a lot of fixer upper types of projects as it relates to this housing situation and now you're like is it really worth it can we just sell the house as is and then move on but you're still biding your time and everything that you do you are taking very careful and methodical steps so I feel like some of you are at that point where you're like maybe we should just sell it or maybe we should you know change location and just rent somewhere else maybe we should change into uh, another city maybe we should you know leave the nest and create our own nest for those of you who are newlyweds or who are thinking you know who who are in significant relationships and you're thinking about having children so that's an element coming in as well um career looks really really good i feel like for many of you you're you're very established in your career and you're watching this and then for others you're at a place that is very very safe okay so it's like a 10-year track or it's like a you're already you're you have your foot in the door in some type of a career building um position so it could be like a governmental agency it could be with the county it has really good benefits and 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 things like that that's what i'm sensing and if you stay there you can shift very quickly into a management position and then from there you can go into a senior position so i feel like your career is already set but you're just like i'm not sure if this is where i want to be because life is still calling me foreign lands foreign seas foreign languages foreign people it's still exotic so I feel many of you are, are at a point where you have something that's really good, but you're still not 100% content. You're, there's still that pull, that wanderlust, okay? Um, I pulled out these three cards, and I wanted to see what your love life looks like. Mainly because this is so uh, work and career and finance focused that I wanted to, you know, specifically look at um, other areas of your life. So... What I have here, first of all, is a water sign. So this is a Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio, Sun, Moon, or Rising. This is somebody who's very uh, home-based, very home-oriented, okay? Um, you know, on the weekends, they don't want to go out with friends. They want to just stay home and cuddle and, and spend a lot of time with you. This is somebody that calls and checks up on you when you're at work. Not so much checking up, but, you know, they check in on you. They, they're, they're a little bit more... Um, they need a lot of reassurance they need a lot of uh, time they need a lot of attention and I feel like many of you this is a relationship partner for many of you and I feel for many of you this is somebody that you're married to this is somebody that wants to settle down that wants to like that might ask you do we want to have more children or can we have more children um, they also want their own space with you for many of you that's like you know they're they're kind of telling you let's start a family let's build a nest let's uh, move out let's live on our own and then for others of you I feel like you are in a long-distance relationship with another person and um, what I'm feeling here is distance space and things like that I feel like a fire sign Sagittarius, Aries, or Leo, okay? And I have here the card of Leo. That's coming out very prominently, and I do have here this fire sign. So I feel like there might be a long-distance relationship where it's, um, I don't feel like it's new. I feel like it's been ongoing, and it's kind of difficult to maintain, mainly because you're at this point where the person might be wanting to start a family the person might be wanting to you know settle down have roots and things like that and um, so once again Aries Sagittarius or Leo 
and it just feels as if there's a sense of longing there's a sense of like you know both of you mutually missing each other like really longing for each other to be nearby and I feel like it's starting to it's starting to be very difficult to come together to reconvene to connect um, there might be time differences you know like um, you might be like you might be on different time zones in different areas in different countries and so it's nighttime where they are daytime where you are and you can't really Skype you can't really um, connect you can't really FaceTime you can't really see each other you can't really you know share and then there are days when you know you've had like a, a really bad day and you want to call them and they're not there so it, it just feels almost like timing is kind of working against you in this relationship and you're watching the the time kind of tick away and so it's hard Re long distance relationships are hard but I definitely feel the emotions are there the, the longing, the love, the affection, the commitment is there. It's just getting, I feel like it's difficult for the other person more so than it is for you. You've got your career, your wealth, and your, your that you're building. The other person, they're okay. I, I mean, I don't feel they're financially in dire strait or anything. But I feel the longing and the missing and the, you know, wanting to be together that is taking its toll on them emotionally and so it's a little bit challenging for the two of you to continue in the relationship because you don't really know you don't have a vision of how the two of you are gonna reconvene you don't have a vision of how the two of you are gonna come together and be you know establish a family okay so it's it's like you need to work this out in your current relationship what I also have as well for those who are single, single people who are, you know, out dating and things like that, I feel like there might have been a recent breakup here with the Four of Wands. A recent breakup. So it could be a fire sign Sagittarius, Aries, Leo, a water sign Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio, or even another uh, earth sign Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn and what you're doing here is this is the end of conflict so this is kind of like you're out of my life we're not fighting anymore i'm no longer like you're getting over the relationship okay and i feel for many of you it was a significant relationship where you might have shared space with the, each other at one point you might have shared housing you might have um, lived together even at one point i feel like somebody moved out and there is a sense of longing, missing somebody, but you're kind of like, I'm kind of over it. I'm not going to uh, succumb to the temptation to reconnect and to reach out. For many of you, if you're dealing with a, a water sign, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio, they are reaching out to you. They're reaching out. And there's an apology that I'm feeling here. And you're kind of turning the other way and it's kind of like signaling to me the end of conflict no more fighting no more internal struggle no more external struggle and um, taking new opportunities okay singles um, it's a really good time for you to make the most of your birthday time birthday time is um, what we call like the solar return when you have a lot of luck and prosperity on your side so you want to make the most of it and you know tell yourself out with the old in with the new so that you can invite new energies into your life okay um it's gonna be a really really good month i feel many of you are getting over breakups and i see many of you are kind of like trying to solidify a relationship as well um you still are trying to figure out the direction you know like what's gonna happen how are we going to come together so it's still not there yet, but I feel like it can get there. Just give it a little bit more time, okay? So Taurus, I hope you all uh, have a wonderful birthday uh, celebration time. I wish you all the best, okay? And take care of yourself. Take it easy, all right? Um, I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye-bye.